Hello. Today I'm going to look at efficient market hypothesis. Yeah, it's a very short part of financial management paper. And um, I'll make it as quick as much as possible. I'll give you the basic information you need to know about it, at least for the exams, and um, in a way that you can understand it. Uh, so first thing I will say, the first thing I'm going to tell you is when we talk about efficient market hypothesis, though there are different types of market, but for this particular topic, this is only looking at the equity market. And uh, for people who probably don't know what equity market is, is a market where shares have been traded, shares of companies, so buying and selling of shares. And why is it relevant? Why do we have to talk about efficient market hypothesis? The major reason why we have to talk about it is because investors will choose to buy or sell a share, yeah, based on what? Based on information availability. So it's based on info. So the type of information now determines whether the investor will buy or whether the investor will sell. Take for instance, if you have a positive information about a company, if the information is positive, what it means is that potential investor will revalue the shares and the shares will have value that is greater than the market price. Yeah. And when the value is greater than the market price, it means that share is undervalued. And when a share is undervalued, everybody wants to buy it because they believe that there is a room for profit. And it's as simple as that. So that is why information is very important for people that invest in shares. Is this information that they will use to determine whether they are going to buy a share or they are going to sell a share? And it's also very important to know, like from your understanding of economic supply and demand, that when everybody wants to buy, yeah, when demand is high, what happens to price? When demand goes up, then you expect the price to also go up. So that is why valuation of that share will also go up because everybody wants to buy it. Now, because why does everybody wants to buy it? Everybody wants to buy because people have heard about the positive information which they have used to revalue the shares in their own personal space. And they have seen that these shares should actually be worth more than is currently trading. And because of that, everybody is running to the market to ask to buy. And when they're asking to buy, they will only buy until the price of that shares rises up to the level they have valued it. And I can just give you a typical example to say, take for instance, information comes out today that a, a company a will pay dividend is a positive news every shareholder every investor likes to get dividend right so the next thing is everybody wants to buy it so currently let's say the market price is five dollars based on, on of, based on this information about future dividend investors will do their valuation so investors will do valuation and take for instance that valuation says that share is now eight dollars because of the positive news. Everybody wants to buy, and they will keep asking for these shares. Everybody will keep asking for these shares, and as they are asking for it, the share price will keep going up. But at the point when the share price hit eight dollar, nobody wants to buy it again, because if you buy at nine dollar when valuation is eight dollar, then you are being stupid as an investor, and that is how share responds to information, right? And something you should know is that when it's the other way around, which means the negative information, the opposite will happen. They will sell. So, and when they are all selling, the price will come down. Yeah. The price of the share will come down. So, it's not just one way. It can be up, it can be down. So, if they are buying, the price will go up. If they are selling, the share price will fall. Yeah. Because... The reason why they are selling is because they've done valuation and they've seen that valuation is $3. So if valuation is $3 and market is currently doing $5, a 
everybody wants to take profit quickly before the share goes back to its original state so everybody will sell and by the time they sell and the market price comes to three dollar people will stop selling because they won't sell at a price that is lower than the valuation yeah because by the time it gets lower than the valuation then they want to buy again to catch up back so that is how information drives the market price and now how is this relevant for efficiency of the market and that is why we are talking about the efficient market hypothesis what is efficient market hypothesis what we are talking about actually is the availability of this information so we're talking of availability of information and when they are available what is the speed of response to the information so speed of response of the market to this information so we said information drives the decision of an investor whether to buy or sell a share it can be positive information or negative information when this positive information he wants to buy when this negative information he wants to sell but what are the types of this information that influences this decision there are three types yeah so we've said positive or negative but either positive or negative can now be divided into these three types you can have past information which is talking about historical information last year profit five year dividend paid this is historical it has happened you can have the second one is what we call the public information public information is about information that is available to everybody is publicly available it can be past it can be present it can be future yeah so this is about present past and even future but it is publicly available to everybody and the third one is the private information so this is tricky private information is not available to everybody is restricted information so it's restricted to insiders only so which means only the directors only the management only the staff probably know about this particular type of information so these are the three types of information based on which market is now being categorized so the type of information a particular market has whether it's a past information is a public information or is a private information determines the efficiency of that market and that is why we now have three types of market efficiency so information drives the share price remember and the type of information determine the type of the efficiency that we are talking about so we'll quickly look at these three types the first type is the weak market you have semi-strong market and we have the strong market and how are they different it's based on these three types of information in a weak market the only information that is available is a past information and what does this mean it means that the share price that you see in the market today has only been valued based on past information only and what is the implication of this the implication is that anybody that has any information most publicly information available information or future information or even present information will make excess profit easily so we we'll call it abnormal profit excess or abnormal profit that is so much of profit because of access to present or future information so easiest to make profit here easiest to make profit because if a market like this exists that has only taken into consideration only past information then there is a lot of opportunities for people to make excessive 
profit. The semi-strong market is looking at valuation of shares based on two types of information are available here. Here, past information is available and also public information is available. So any shares you see in this market has been valued based on those two types of information, based on both past and public. And in that case, you cannot make any abnormal profit here, except you have access to insider information. So abnormal profit or excess profit, huge profit, yeah, only by using insider info, which is the private information. And it's not acceptable, it's, it's illegal. If you do it and you're caught, you go to jail, right? But it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. In fact, this is the popular form of market we have today, semi-strong. It's more practical, right? And look at the strong market. Strong market as, is a type of market that has shares been valued based on past information, public information, and even private information. So the share that has been traded in this type of strong market has been valued based on all the three types of information. So here is extremely difficult to make abnormal profits. In fact, making profit is almost random process. Extremely difficult. To make excess profit. You can only make tiny profit. No, you can't make abnormal profit in this market. Yeah, it's your being profitable is just by chance. It's extremely rare, and it's not realistic to have a strong market. It's actually unrealistic. Yeah, remember I said semi-strong is the most realistic market you can find. So, these are the major things you really need to know on market um, efficiency. Remember. Well, the major thing to understand is the fact that this relates to equity market alone. And what we're saying is that the equity, which are shares, their prices are driven by information availability. And this information determines whether a potential investor will buy or an investor will sell existing shares. If the information is positive, it wants to buy. When it is buying, price of the share is going up. When the information is negative, then investor will want to sell and when it sells the price will come down but what are the types of information that determines efficiency of the market there are three types like the past information that is public information and there is a private information and based on this the market hypothesis has been grouped into three efficient groups the first one is a weak market which has shares that has only been valued based on past information such as historical data, historical profit, historical dividend payment, historic appointment of director. But the semi-strong has shares that has been valued based on both past and public information. And public information can be present, past, or future information. It might be about an announcement of dividend. It's publicly available. Then you expect the shares in the market to respond immediately because it's available to everybody. So nobody can take advantage of another person. We're all going to, we all heard it and we're all going to respond based on that. So you expect the shares to respond almost immediately based on that publicly available information. So no abnormal profit. And strong market is a past, is a type of market that have shares with valuation based on all the three types of information, past, public, and private. And in that case, it's most difficult to make excessive profit in this type of market. And that will be it for Fisher Market Hypothesis.